Now, the term national emergency is usually reserved for disasters like earthquakes or floods, but tomorrow President Trump is expected to declare one over a different kind of disaster, the huge number of deaths from the new drug scourge, man-made opioids sweeping through the United States. America's National Center for Health Statistics estimates that drug overdoses killed more than 64,000 people, if you can believe that, in the United States last year. Around 85% of those deaths were from opioids, and figures show the epidemic of drugs over doses is killing people at almost double the rate of both gun and driving related death. It means that for the first time drug overdoses are the leading cause of death for Americans under 50 years old. To go on patrol with police officers in any town of any size and in any state in America is to realize that a single issue overwhelms these communities. The heroin bags there. You go into the bathrooms, and if they have the drugs, they'll use it there. The addicts tell the same story of heroin dealers saturating neighborhoods. Do you think there's an issue? Is there an issue about him? A drug issue? It's a drug issue all over the world, not just for them. Anyone in your family affected by it or anything? Sure. That yeah. I know some of your friends, yeah. The problem of heroin addiction is now so embedded in this country. I got a that officers know it's impossible to arrest their way out of the crisis. With you? This woman is being detained after being discovered with large amounts of opioid pills and cash. See all the pills? Yeah. yeah. These are all oxy oxycodone pills. She claims the pills are painkillers for personal use. The police believe otherwise. Is this a user or a dealer? Well, we found a lot of amount of money. We believe we interrupted what, what was going to be a deal. God help America, uh, heroin is coming in in droves. In 2015, in a New Jersey town overwhelmed by drugs, I met Michael DeLeon, a reformed dealer, addict, and gang member, who first revealed to me the tsunami of heroin in suburban America. It takes a lot to scare me, frighten me, but I'm frightened for America. I've been to 183 funerals in six years. Today, two years on, he says the White House is right to be describing this as a national emergency. I'm pet if there was a better word than petrified, I'd use it. I'm scared, to, out of, I'm scared to death. I really am, out of my mind. I'm more scared of this than any other world crisis we have, more scared of this than North Korea, than nuclear bombs. I'm more scared of this than anything because people are complacent so much right now, they don't think it's as bad as it is, and it's going to get worse. His mission now is to help addicts and to demand a major federal response. We need to look at this as if it's the biggest hurricane about to hit Florida and we are all battle stations and everyone's watching it and evacuations are happening. We need to take an approach like we've never approached this before and half of America still believes that, that this is someone else's problem. It's not affecting them. That is a point that the police echo, that this needs leadership at the very highest level. At this point, to call the heroin epidemic a national emergency is to state the obvious. But why does this country mobilize such massive resources for a natural disaster? But on this front line, it simply looks the other way. With the criminal justice system completely overwhelmed, the president, perhaps a decade too late, will tomorrow be bringing America's addiction crisis out of the shadows. Robert Moore, News at 10, in New Jersey.